Okay, so our next speaker is Auden Dahl, who's a professor of psychology. And I don't know if any of you in the room were in any of the classes where in last fall they studied student attitudes about cheating. For example, Max, who's in the audience, he's a psychology student, and yet he attended every single one of my discrete math classes because my class was one of the classes where they were studying the student attitudes about cheating. And um, Auden is, what's going on? Oh, I'll get it for you. Right there. Sorry. Um, and, and Max and Anastasia and various other people in the room have worked with um, Auden in terms of his research on cheating. And the results are fascinating, and this is your chance to learn about SOE students' attitudes about cheating. Oh, Alan, can we have your mic? Here, start talking and we'll get you the mic. All right. Um, well, thank you very much for putting this together, Tracy. I'm, I'm very glad to be here. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm excited to share some of our work and to hear your uh, thoughts. Um, I'll take uh, the mic back as soon as I figure uh, out how to do this. I, yeah. I can, oh, all right, that's great. All right, thank you very much. It's an example of how uh, accommodating Tracy has been during this process, just even putting the mic on. Um, so yeah, I, I'm stand here and I'm, I'm humbled because I, I'm here representing a, a large group of people, some of whom are here. Uh, Carmel and Max are here, who are among the RAs uh, doing the data collection and has been involved with us uh, as well and working uh, together, and, and Tracy, of course. Um, and uh, the person who's done, probably spent the most hours on this is my graduate student, uh, Talia Walzer, who is uh, abroad, so I'm here in, instead of her, and, and I'm going to share some of our findings. Um, and also, I'm going to stress the connections between those findings and what I think are some um, uh, implications for how to uh, address uh, academic integrity uh, in engineering and, and beyond. Um, and the, the reason why we got into uh, studying academic integrity and cheating, or one important reason, is that cheating and integrity is something that everybody cares about. Uh, most recently, uh, or pretty recently, uh, you probably haven't heard about this story of the college admission scandal, which is really a, sc a scandal of, of cheating, right? So there are these uh, wealthy parents who are paying coaches and, and test takers to help their kids get into college. Um, and there were headlines and there were tweets all over uh, the place. And two themes that are emerged out of this uh, process is A, that people care about this stuff. Um, a lot of people were outraged, so they, saying, I worked really hard to get into college, and now these people are paying their way without working for it. And the other part is that it has consequences. So some of these people now um, will be you know, not, no longer be in college, and some of their parents will go to jail. Um, and this is just an example of how consequential and impactful uh, cheating and integrity, issues of cheating and integrity are, and how we all, pretty much all of us, care about these things. And you know, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez uh, even drew connections between this college admission scandal and uh, the current state of politics, with, with money uh, being a way of buying influence uh, uh, in, as an, in an unfair manner. Um, so by cheating here in this context, I mean violation of academic standards that yield an academic advantage. Um, and uh, one of the things that's striking about cheating is that it's quite prevalent, you know, depending on how you look at it. Um, let's see here, yeah. Uh, so in our data and in, in other studies in the past, most students report cheating at least once during their academic careers. Um, and this involves plagiarism or um, getting solutions from other students or obtaining legitimate access to exams, for example. So this has been uh, pretty, pretty widely known for a long time that uh, the, in terms of the number of people engaged in this at least once, the rates are fairly high. At the same time, you know, most people uh, don't cheat most of the time, but at least once during their academic careers uh, by most uh, studies. Um, so the big question for us here as psychologists and as educators is why? You know, why is this happening? And uh, here's uh, where our work sort of started breaking some, some new ground, we think. And because um, we, we're challenging some of the assumptions that people have made about uh, the explanation of why student, uh, student cheating is so prevalent. Um, because some people in, our, in the field uh, have proposed that uh, there is a culture of, uh, of uh, misconduct or a culture of cheating where most students think cheating is just fine. But in our data, 
um, we find the very opposite. We only find that you know, about 4% of the students say cheating is generally okay. The vast majority of students say, no, it's not okay to cheat, and they're outraged by the college admission scandal and, and so forth. And they say things like, it's very unfair for those who are honest, honest and hardworking, it's annoying when people pretend to demonstrate skills they're incapable of, and so forth. A number of reasons why people are disapproving of cheating, and these are, these are students uh, here at, at UCSE. So, we're trying to figure this out. Why is it that students are cheating even though uh, they generally say that cheating is, cheating is wrong? And to explore this, uh, we have asked a number of questions. Uh, so we've asked whether instructors actually teach about integrity and cheating. Are students actually hearing messages about what constitutes integrity and cheating? Uh, when students engage in cheating at the time, do they know that they're cheating? And insofar as they do, why do they decide to do this? And I'm building on some of the themes that, that Alan was, was talking about. Um, and we're uh, aiming to, to use this research and um, uh, to, um, to try to devise better methods for helping students and teachers promote integrity and uh, reduce uh, cheating rates. And we've approached this uh, set of questions in a number of ways. Um, in computer science and engineering, we've done some classroom observations, we've done online surveys, we've uh, interviewed people about, our students and, and uh, instructors about hypothetical cases, about their own experiences, and we've done similar kind of work in, in psychology and cognitive science, and then we've also done some work with some local high schools. Addressing these questions of what are students learning, are they aware of what constitutes cheating in their classes, and why, how are they making these decisions about sometimes cheating, and, and most of the time not cheating. Um, so the first question that we ask here, uh, in sort of logical order, is do instructors talk about integrity and cheating? Do students even, are students receiving information so, that, so as to navigate the difference between cheating and integrity? Um, so we've done an, a, about uh, 400 classroom sessions uh, that we've observed to, to observe uh, talk about an academic integrity and cheating. About 100 of those were in computer science, computer engineering. Um, and we find here that about 20% of the class sessions make some mention of um, cheating or integrity. Um, many of those mentions, uh, especially in psychology classes, were simply stressing sanctions. So saying, don't do it, you'll get in trouble. Which isn't really telling very much about you know, what it is that you're supposed not to do. It's telling you don't do it, whatever it is. Um, other cases to give examples, and they're relatively rare in our observations, uh, do uh, instructors provide definitions of cheating uh, for the purpose of this class. And my point isn't here to chastise an instructor, but an instructor, and I, 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 I don't talk about cheating all the time at all. Uh, but rather to point out that there is some room for improvement here. We could talk about uh, academic integrity and provide more information about academic integrity uh, without it sort of taking our, over our entire class. There is this, we're well below ceiling in terms of how much we teach students about what constitutes integrity in each class. And the, ch the real challenge here, deciding what constitutes cheating and, and deciding what constitutes plagiarism is a real hard problem because it's very discipline specific. In some cases, it's class specific or even instructor specific. And how similar are two text, um, two texts have to be before they constitute plagiarism. Um, it's a hard problem. Um, so this leads us to wonder, okay, we have this hard problem. Instructors in, in, uh, aren't talking a ton about it. Um, so uh, this raises the question, well, are students and uh, instructors agreeing on what constitutes cheating in these various classes? And we've done this research with a number of different majors, but I'll focus here on the research we've done in, in, in School of Engineering. Um, and if I can advance here. All right, so here's an example of the kind of method that we've used uh, to, to here studying plagiarism specifically. Um, plagiarism is interesting because it's, there is, almost by definition, there is going to be a gray area where it's not entirely clear whether something constitutes plagiarism, and then they're gonna, they're gonna be some really, really clear-cut cases. So we presented instructors and students uh, with these code pairs that differed in their level of, of similarity, uh, and then we asked uh, participants uh, whether this uh, constituted plagiarism. And when we look at these judgments, so whether instructors and whether te uh, students said that this constituted uh, plagiarism, uh, we you know, saw some, a couple of interesting things uh, that I think are, have implications for how we think about this uh, issue. 
Um, so the first is that, you know, if you look here on the uh, horizontal axis, it says the, it's the percentage of students saying a given uh, code pair is plagiarism. On the y-axis, it's the percentage of instructors saying this constitutes plagiarism, and then the dots represent the different code pairs that participants were presented with. Um, overall, we see that there is some amount of agreement. It's not, the dots all, aren't all over the place. There is a pretty strong correlation between student and instructor judgments. But there's also quite a bit of discrepancy, and specifically, there are several code pairs where we see that instructors were quite a lot stricter. They, so they were much more likely to say that the two texts constituted plagiarism than were students. And this is where uh, we can have these kinds of situations that Alan was talking about earlier, where a student honestly did not intend to plagiarize, and yet their submissions are deemed uh, plagiarism. All right, so that's uh, the challenge. And, and the, the, um, the goal here, right, one goal here could, try to, could be to try to align these judgments better so that students and, and instructors for a given class agree on what constitutes uh, plagiarism. Uh, another uh, paradigm where they were used here was to ask about specific activities. It's not comparing pairs of text, but asking whether a given activity, for example, working together to complete an assignment uh, constitutes um, uh, cheating uh, for a given class. And here again, we see the similar kind of pattern where overall the, 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 the ratings for students and instructors are correlated. Um, so that you know, most uh, people in both groups think that if somebody else wrote the code, then that constitutes cheating. But there is also a great deal of, of variability, and so indicating between the two columns here, percentage of students saying it's cheating, percentage of instructors saying it's cheating, suggesting uh, that there is some, some ambiguity or uncertainty or disagreement about which activities count as cheating at which, in which classes. And this is, again, where the kinds of situations come up that Alan was talking about, where a student uh, could, in principle, engage in some activity, for example, collaborating with a peer, thinking that they're not cheating, and yet it's been deemed cheating by the instructor. Um, so this leads us to ask, okay, well, there is some disagreement between instructors and students about what constitutes cheating. So does that mean the students don't always know that they're cheating? So we asked students about their own experiences engaging in something that might have counted as cheating, like collaborating with a peer, for example. We had, did about 150 uh, interviews um, by students on experiences in engineering and, and elsewhere. Uh, in other majors, and uh, 90, more than 90% across a couple of different studies uh, indicate that they may have cheated at some point in, in the past. So that's consistent with, with past literature. Uh, and that's you know, them just saying they at least once have done something that might have counted as cheating. Um, but, and then in, uh, here, um, in about 50% or more uh, of these cases, students said, at the time, I wasn't quite sure whether I cheated, or I actually thought, no, I was pretty sure I didn't cheat, and yet, in retrospect, or because I was accused, uh, I, I, this, this was deemed uh, cheating, right? So, in the, in, so, of course, it's possible here that sort of students are portraying them, their experiences in a favorable light, but one of the good things about doing this research, us coming in as neutral researchers who are not in a position of accusing anybody of anything, we don't bring this to the provost, we're simply trying to understand what's going on, is that there isn't that same incentive for trying to present yourself favorably as opposed to when you're being accused of something. Um, so, we, even if the, uh, so overall, we feel pretty confident that, this, that a large proportion of situations that students would talk about when they talk about past experiences of possible cheating, they, they didn't, weren't sure or really thought they were not uh, cheating um, at the time of, of engaging in the act. Still, I mean, there is a, a decent number of cases where, in our data and clearly beyond, uh, where students do uh, know that they are cheating, or at least think that they might be cheating. Uh, and um, so we've asked students to explain, okay, why did this happen? Um, why did the, you, you engage in this particular behavior despite knowing that you know, it might have counted as cheating? Um, and uh, a number of different uh, reasons come up, uh, each of which sort of call for different kinds of, of interventions or, or changes that we can do, and we can hopefully talk about those at, at the end. Um, one reason, this is all in data from engineering, uh, from, from the School of Engineering, uh, but the sort of findings are similar for other majors. Um, 
So the most common uh, relating to, uh, common reason that students bring up uh, relating to something also that Alan was touching on earlier is the sort of the challenge or the time uh, that that, were, uh, that called for by a particular assignment. So students talking about lacking time, being unable, being unprepared, uh, in the point of saying that the, 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 the class didn't really prepare me for this particular problem, uh, and that's why I decided to look Google it or, or look it up or whatever the case might be. Also, pretty commonly, uh, were, were students talking about examples where they'd helped a peer. So they thought, well, I didn't want my, my friend or my classmate to fail the class, so that's why I, I gave them a little uh, a nudge um, or guidance or, um, in, for, on this assignment. Um, other people uh, talked about the need for a better grade, so that was a, a common reason as well. So simply saying, I really need to pass this class to declare my major, or uh, I need a, a certain, I mean, in psychology we have a, probably engineering uh, majors too, there's a certain GPA requirement to declare. Um, and then a smaller number, but still a substantial number of students said, you know, I, I actually think that by, by engaging this collaborative behavior of Googling, it actually learned better what I was doing. So they're essentially challenging sort of the learning value of the, uh, of, the, uh, of the assignment. And my point isn't here to, to sort of endorse these reasons or to criticize, but simply to describe that this is what students are expressing to us as they uh, talk about their, their reasons for cheating, and this is something that, you know, we, a place where we can start a dialogue and, and perhaps having instructors explain why would you learn better by doing it on your own as opposed to um, uh, looking it up online. Um, lastly, you know, moving from the empirical findings of what's actually going on today to thinking towards uh, interventions and changes to try to improve integrity and, and reduce rates of cheating, uh, we asked participants, um, again, this is from um, School of Engineering, uh, whether uh, they had, well, what they thought would help um, um, decrease uh, rates of cheating. Uh, and a large number of both students and instructors talked about precisely what we I touched on in the beginning, namely the need to clarify, okay, what constitutes academic misconduct in this class um, as a major uh, area for, for improvement that would help. Um, Another is to, to, that, that both students and instructors talked about was to promote better understanding, essentially putting students in a better position to solve the problems that they were asked to solve in the class. Um, other people talked about more learning resources uh, similar, along similar lines of helping students access resources that were permitted as opposed to uh, the resources that were not permitted. And then special instructors, not so much students, talked about you know, increased detection or punishment uh, for, uh, for cheating. Um, Okay, and we can talk about some of these, but I just wanted to put those out there as some suggestions that we've encountered in this work. Um, so to summarize here, um, to, so, to take these findings that we uh, have from our research, both in the School of Engineering and beyond, uh, what does this mean for, for students um, specifically in, in, in order to um, uh, avoid cheating? Um, and one is, um, to try to find out, you know, take the responsibility of trying to find out what constitutes cheating in your classes. If you're not sure whether what you're doing constitutes cheating, the best way to deal, solve that problem isn't to you know, take your chances and hope for the best, but rather to uh, approach the instructors and ask, you know, what, what, what is, is it, is it okay in this class to collaborate on an assignment like Alan was saying earlier? Um, Another uh, is to seek advice. So we see here that many of the incidents of, of, of cheating occur when students are you know, pushed up into a corner and they feel like I'm not able to solve this problem or, or, or get a sufficiently good grade uh, without relying on means that are prohibited by the instructor. In those situations, seeking out help, seeking advice from the instructor, from the TAs, uh, is, a, a, is a great way to avoid cheating because that involves seeking out resources that are permitted. And one of the most, in my experience anyways, one of the most underused resources on, uh, in, in undergraduate education is office hours. I, I mean, I, I don't know how many hours, the time I've spent alone in office hours versus with somebody is, 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 is um, staggering. So uh, I spend so much time sitting in my office, waiting for students to show up, uh, and uh, that's a great place to have those kinds of conversations about how do I solve this problem, can I get an extension, can I, uh, how can I understand what, what I'm asked to do here.
And then if you are excused, I'm not going to talk a lot about this because Alan sp spoke about it in such, um, uh, with such wisdom and uh, d detail, but uh, I just want to encourage you to try to read up on the policy. It's not that long. It's a little confusing, but not that long. Understand what's at stake, what your rights are, and how things work, who's responsible, what, what does the meeting with the pros mean, for example. And then... Um, also, as Alan was talking about, see these conversations, see this process as a learning opportunity, um, as a way of learning, okay, how can I solve this kind of problem better in the future? Um, and as our little sort of slogan here at the end here, uh, cheating once doesn't make you a cheater, it makes you a learner. Uh, again, viewing these kinds of events, uh, either potential or actual mis misconduct cases, as an opportunity to solve the problems better in the future. So with that, I want to thank uh, our team uh, members, our large team of uh, the grad student Tali there and all our undergraduate uh, research assistants who have done an amazing job on this. So I want to thank our partners, so Anna, uh, Tracy, and then Jody Green at the Center for Innovation and, um, of Te and Teaching and Learning. And just so you know, that's Talia down there. Ruth. Yes. I just said she's not here. I want to point her out. She's this is, this is her. So this is who you could have been seeing today instead of me. So <laughs> sorry, sorry about that, but here I am. So you're ahead of schedule, but I'm going to go ahead and start so that we'll have more time for Q&A. Go ahead. So um, give, first, give me back the mic. In fact, would you put it on me? I can.